this is a Tira nano mask. Besides filtering the viruses and bacteria that cause respiratory infection, it kills them. It has intrinsic ability to destroy any microbe that lands on the surface so that my hands now are cleaner for touching this fabric than they were before. And it is reusable. You can wash it hundreds of times and it will not lose that capacity to kill microbes. I'm Dr. Joseph Nderitu. I'm a medical doctor and nanotechnology researcher. And I'm here to tell you the story of the journey that has led to this innovation. It's a long journey, but a short story. I'll summarize and I'll start in my first encounter, my first time as a medical doctor in 2016. At the beginning of 2016, I'm a medical officer intern in Nyeri General Hospital. And that's a time I come face to face with the reality of the double burden of disease in Africa. And that means having both incurable chronic diseases and infectious diseases superimposed over the catastrophe of antimicrobial resistance, which means that we are dealing with the problem of infections that don't respond to antibiotics. I'm a young doctor in my 20s, idealistic, off, you know, fresh off the minting press, you know? And here I'm faced with the situation where my patients, a lot of them have diabetes, and they have very large wounds, often covering the entire leg, that have been there for months, and every antibiotic I give will not work. And the standard practice in such cases is you have to amputate. You have to cut someone's leg. Now, I had taken an oath as a doctor. First, do no harm. And here I am, pushed to a corner where the only way I can prevent death for someone is to harm them, because to amputate your limbs leaves you immobile, depressed, economically unproductive, and dependent on others. Of course, I had to do what I had to do, but every day and every night, I was tortured by that. I, I, I wondered, you know, what, what else can I do? Can I live a lifetime career of doing things to my patients that leave them worse for wear, even if they don't die? And this took me back to my younger days. I'd always been the science geek, the science nerd that I was always fascinated about atoms and cells and molecules and things like that. And as a young adult in my early 20s, I'd, I'd already been, I'd already graduated as a scientist, I was already publishing. And uh, one time uh, with my friends in Rome, we hung around and uh, talking about science, doing research, and uh, we would be discussing Galileo Galilei and uh, Leonardo da Vinci and how those men brought science and created the pedestal for modern human science at a time when no one really understood what they were saying. And at that, uh, that time we were talking about nanotechnology at a time when most of the world was struggling to understand what nanotechnology was. And as a 21, 22 year old, I think it felt for me like, well, this might be something that I'm going to use as a vehicle for my sons. And, but I wasn't particularly serious, you know, it was all very academic. But when, I, when this problem of patience now became real to me, I had to make decisions to save their lives, then I knew I had to go back to that and make it work for this particular problem. Now, so I, I struggled through the years, trying to learn more about nanotechnology, doing a lot of research, and uh, not getting much uh, success. But by the time we come to 2018, I'm a chief medical officer for one of the hospitals in Moranga County, and uh, there I still have the same responsibility. But I hadn't gone as far in nanotechnology to put something that could treat patients, but I still needed to do something for these patients who were dying from wounds. And what I did at the time is I improvised, you know, uh, using uh, vacuum, 
uh, vacuum wound therapy, which, which means that I create an airtight seal around the wound and connect it to a suction machine that sucks all the air from the wound. And I saw that that was working fantastically. But these machines, they required electricity, they were noisy, they would heat up, and basically they were not convenient, they were not the perfect thing. So I went back to nanotechnology seriously and I did a lot of work, but nanotechnology is very high tech, is very expensive, it needs a lot of equipment, a lot of reactors. And because I wasn't having a lot of success in getting grants or support of partnerships, uh, by the end of 2019, I was ready to quit. I was ready to say, look, I'm done here. And then comes 2020, COVID-19. It shocks the world, you know, everything is brought down to a standstill. Everybody runs home to run from COVID-19. We, the doctors, wear our masks and run towards the disease. We have to treat patients. And I become one of those who get COVID-19. And I, I stay, you know, for weeks, the headache, the sore throat, yeah? That memorable pain in every part of your body, your muscles, your joints, your, you feel your, your lungs feeling like with acid. You feel as if boiling water is being flushed down your gut. Everything is completely out of control. And that reminded me that the technology that I'd given up on might be the reason why a lot of people might survive, because this was bad. We were already protecting ourselves with masks, but they were not working. And so I went back to my nanotechnology. I perfected the methods. I worked with the materials that I had. I submitted the, the materials that I produced by mid last year to the Ministry of Health for testing, because I needed to know, could they actually kill the viruses and the bacteria as I had predicted? And uh, we did a lot of testing uh, for, those, for, the, for the fabric, and every single one of the tests gave positive results. None of the microbes exposed to my fabric survived. And so I felt now, being a COVID survivor and seeing how everybody else, a lot of other people were dying every day, I felt that I had a moral obligation to bring the technology to bear. And so began, you know, the second phase of the struggle to manufacture it. You know, I had to partner with uh, textile manufacturers. And it's a difficult thing because the minute you mention nanotechnology, you'll be worried like, you know, no, no, no. Maybe it's going to blow up our machines or something. So I had very limited production last year, masks, which I have been using since last year for more than 12 months now. Uh, and by the Middle, the, the end of the first quarter of this year, I succeeded in getting a company that was willing to partner with me in the production of the fabric and the masks. And these are the masks that you have now. And I would like to say, in summary, that the, 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 the benefit it brings is you can imagine this virus that is continuing to wreak havoc on the world. This is the end of it. When it lands here, it's not going to, to be spread to any other you know, surface, this is the end of it. It lands on that surface and this is the end of it. This mask is also solving the problem of single use issue, where you th if you think about seven billion people disposing a single use mask every day, the destruction to the environment is unimaginable. If you think about those of us in Africa, where more than 80% of the population is economically strained, you can't afford to buy a mask every single day. So people are reusing the single-use masks, which already have a lot of accumulated viruses and bacteria on them, and they're becoming a source of infection themselves. And that, this nanomask is also solving that problem. And we're also helping to support the revolution, a renaissance of nanotechnology and science in Africa, because every single coin that you buy for the, this nanomask goes back into the research that I was doing previously for the production of products for wound care, for critical care, for the reduction of hospital-acquired infection. And so I hope that um, the nanomask will, number one, help us to get rid of the COVID-19 pandemic, and secondly, and most importantly for me, help to continue expanding the new 
and much needed revolution in African science, African nanotechnology, and African healthcare. Thank you very much.